Before you get up on stage, there's a bunch of things you need to think about. Things you need to think about, be aware of, be prepared for, because once you get up on stage, that's it. That's the whole thing. You're on stage, you're looking at people, you're thinking, okay, hope I prepared everything, hope I got everything right. Because if you didn't, you're going to find out really quick. And you don't want to be suddenly surprised by thinking, oh, this is not going nearly as well as I thought it would. Well, guess I'll have to prepare better next time. Meanwhile, I have to get through this fiasco and hope for the best. You really don't want to be there. So, think about what you're going to do. What is it when you go up on stage really you're going to do you want to be aware of and thinking about? And there's some basic questions that you should be thinking about, preparing for, working on way before you actually step foot out on that stage. Simple things that if you do them in advance, and you get them right, and you focus on them, will make things a lot better further on down the road. And the process of getting these things right is what it's all about in preparing a speech. Now, many speakers, they go out, they kind of get up on stage and say, Hey, you know, let's hope everything goes well. Hope everything is great. Hope the audience is in a good mood. And sometimes they are. It works out. Sometimes they aren't. And it's a problem. Because you didn't go through, didn't prepare, didn't really get ready for what you're going to be doing up there. And that's the challenge of speaking, getting up, saying it, just letting it all hang out. But doing so in a way which grabs your audience in, gets them involved and interested. And that involves doing a little bit of preparation beforehand. So today you're going to find out more about what this really this preparation process is. And how it works. Because... Before you get up on stage, there's just certain things you have to be thinking about, aware of, and really willing to, to do something about. And it has to do with kind of understanding what's going on and understanding really what really you're, you're doing up there. Because the magic of a good presentation is it all looks effortless, right? It's all effortless. You get up on stage, everything goes right, and you're like, wow, that was simple. The audience thinks, hey, that was, that was amazing. And that's the effect you want. But you got to think about things a little bit in advance. And there's certain things you need to think about. Every presentation you give, there's certain things you really need to think about, be aware of, focused on, because those things will determine where your speech goes and how well it goes. Those things will really get your speech together, really make your speech happen in a way that if you don't get everything together, it just it doesn't happen. It doesn't go. That's really the, the challenge up there. Getting everything flowing, getting everything moving, by just understanding some really basic things about where you are, about what's going on, about who's out there, all these sort of things to be thinking about. And there is kind of a, a process to go through them, a kind of an order to it. And once you understand that order, then you begin to take charge out there. Then it doesn't become such a big deal. Then these things start to, to flow in a way that maybe they hadn't flown before. You start thinking, okay, I can do this. This is all right. With every talk you give, every moment you're talking about, you get a little more confidence that you're going in the right direction. Because you did that preparation beforehand. You knew what was going on. You thought about it. And now when you get up on stage, you kind of reap the benefits. You kind of say, okay, yeah, this is going good. I like this. This will work. And that's really what it's all about. You get up there.
questions. Today you're going to find out about what really you should do to prepare before you can get up on stage. Now there's something that's obvious, very obvious, in speaking. And yet if you don't think about it in advance, it causes a lot of problems. Because you get up on stage and suddenly things don't go as well as you hoped they would. Because something you really basic you just kind of missed. So it really should be in your checklist. Understanding this simple basic thing, where it fits in, how to do it, right at the very beginning. Thinking about this right at the very beginning of your speech will make your speech a lot, lot better. Because this one thing will really help you become aware of what's going on out there. What are you doing up there? Why you even got up to speak in the first place? And what's the best way to really make that connection? And that simply is becoming aware of your audience. Audience. Now your audience is all about who? Who? Who is out there? Who is your audience? If you don't ask that question, you get up on stage, you may discover you had a speech for one audience, and you discover you've got a completely different audience. If you have a speech created especially for doctors, and you're speaking in front of a bunch of lawyers, that could be a problem. So who? Audience. Who is out there? Who is going to be in your audience? Do a little bit of research, a little bit of understanding. Talk to people. Say, who's going to be out there? When I get up there on stage, who am I really going to be presenting to? What's their level in terms of the company level that they're at? Or just in terms of their comprehension level? Or their grade level? Just get an idea who's going to be out there. Because once you know who's going to be out there, then you start thinking, okay, well, I know who's going to be out there. It gives me a good idea about who I'm really talking to. And that'll affect things down the line. It'll definitely affect things down the line. So the way you sculpt things, the way you change things a little bit to make sure what you're talking about is relevant for that audience. So you aren't saying things that are going way above them, or you aren't saying things that are too much, too much beneath them. Well, you want to have a very basic message. If you have a message that's overly basic and you're talking to a very advanced audience, they might get a little bit restless. On the other hand, you have a very basic audience and you have all these complex things are just way above their head, you may just lose them right at the very beginning. You aren't going to get involved because you're thinking, Oof, what the heck this stuff is, but I'm not interested in it. Nobody I know is interested in it. It's not my thing. I'm just going to let it go. So who? When you understand who will be out there, then you start kind of constructing things. Okay, this is the message I've got to get across. These are the people I've got to reach. Who are the movers and shakers? Who are the people absolutely you know that you need to contact or change their ideas or get their thoughts going? Who is it? Is it the CEO? Is it just people out there in general? Is it a bunch of uh, people who are want to rouse up and rise into a cause or a purpose? Who really are these people out there? Being aware of that audience, thinking about that audience, thinking, okay, well, I've got a pretty general audience here, I've got to keep things general, or I've got a very advanced audience, I've got to have things advanced, but not too advanced. Even if you have an advanced audience doing everything at a very, very high level, it may not work as well as keeping things fairly simple, but understanding the advanced audience. For instance, if you have an advanced audience, maybe you want to take complex things the audience is familiar with and look at them in a simpler, different sort of way. This could work very well with an advanced audience. Like, here's a complex idea, but here's a simple way to look at it that helps you look at it in a whole different sort of way. You get a whole new perspective on things. Ideally, once you understand who you're talking to, you understand how really to shape and change and shift that, that message of yours is really going to work with that audience. Sometimes they have to be really advanced. Sometimes keeping things very basic while realizing that your audience is very advanced can help. You can say very simple things, but before you say them, say you acknowledge that, that there are advanced people out there. And say, well, you may understand all this already, already, but let's just take a look at it in a very simple sort of a way. 
and I can really commit. Once you know who, then you want to move on to the second question. Okay, you know who the people are. You get it. You know who's out there. You're thinking, all right, I know who's out there. I know who they are, what sort of things you're interested in. I'm going to scope this message. Okay, great. Great, that's all good. It's all wonderful. Understand who they are. But then, but then really, the point is that second thing. Can I know who they are? Then you got to start a card and get into that second part. Thing you got to be thinking about. It's so important when you get out there. So you don't know who they are. You don't know the second part. Things just kind of fall apart. Say, hey, what's going on? I need that, that second part there. And the second part simply is your point. Your point. Notice, what are you talking about? What is the point you're talking about up there? Now, who you're talking to can have a lot to do with what point you're talking about. So, okay, I know I'm talking with somebody advanced, all right, I got a very advanced point to make. That's what I really want to get across. Great. Fantastic. And that's where you get it across. You really get it across that advanced point to the audience. So they think, oh, okay, I get it. I know what you're talking about. And that's the thing. Once you understand the who, you got to get the what. So your audience thinks, oh, okay, I know what that is. Or, I know that's important to me. Sometimes your audience doesn't know what it is. Exactly. But you've got to introduce it to the way that you think you're talking about that's really going to, to make it relevant and make it connect. Because if you're talking about things to your audience and they don't know quite what it is, it's all right. But then you still have to find a way to stick that what and really explain it to them. That's where the, important, the audience is so important. You've got something everybody out there already knows. Great. You're talking to an audience. All people understand what you're talking about. Fine. But quite often, you may be talking to a mixed audience where some people get what you're talking about. Other people don't. So you've got to get that point across that what thing you're, what you're talking about across a different sort of audiences. And that's why quite often when you're talking about what you're talking about, it helps to kind of keep things in the middle there. Not too advanced, not too below, but just kind of in the middle. So it'll hit most of the people in your audience. Most of the people want to say, oh, yeah, great. But of course, if you're talking about what, it really helps if it's relevant. Now, but sometimes it's not something directly they have any experience with. But even if they don't experience with it, what you're talking about, you've got to find this way to somehow connect it to them. Somehow what you're talking about has to be relevant to your audience. You're talking about something your audience is thinking, well, nothing to do with me. I don't care about this. Well, that's, that's going to be a problem. Even if you know, hey, I know my audience, I'm fine with it. But they're not interested in what you're talking about. That's going to be an issue. That's going to be a major, major issue. So you want to talk about, get out there talking about what really it is. What really you're saying, what really is going on. And that's, that's the key thing. Because once they get what it is, all right, okay, they're, they're starting to get there. Like, all right, I understand what you're talking about, all right, and it's definitely relevant to me. Yeah, it's relevant to me. Okay, so I'll, I'll listen a little bit more. That's really all you can do as a speaker. You want to get the audience to listen a little bit more. They may not want to listen to the whole thing, but if you can just get them to think, okay, I'm going to listen a little bit more. And then after they listen a little more, they say, okay, I'll listen even a little bit more than that. And it's by this process of getting them to listen a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more that you bring your audience in and you kind of direct them down to, to where it's going. But if they don't know what you're talking about, or they think what you're talking about has nothing to do with them, then they stop listening. They think, forget it. No. I'm not going to do this. Not going to happen. So that what really needs to connect, really needs to be relevant, really needs to fit in with who you're talking about, and that what really needs to make that connection. And that's, 
the second part, the getting that what, the point you really want to get across. Then comes the third part. All right, you got the who. You know who you're talking to. And that's great. That's a first step in the right direction. And you know what you're talking about. You even customized it so what you're talking about really resonates, really gets with this audience. And that's key. That's really, really important there. So who you're talking about, what you're talking about, but there's still something kind of missing. In fact, your audience is going to start thinking about it. Thinking, okay, I know you're talking to me. All right, great. And I know what you're talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. But then this new question comes up in their mind. A natural question that comes out of the who and the what. Okay. Got the who for me. What is it? And then that, that next question just pops into their mind. They start thinking, okay, I know who it's for and what it is, but What's the technique? What's the technique? How do I do this? How do I do this? That's the thing. Once you get that audience with you, you know, okay, it's for me. I know what it's about. All right, great. But how do I bring this thing into my life? Even if they get your point. Okay, I get your point. Yeah, okay. It's a great idea. How do I make that idea work for me? And that's really the heart of your speech. That's really the most important thing there. It's how do I make this idea really work for me? Because once your audience starts thinking, okay, all right, it's for me and what you're talking about, and then they're thinking, oh, wait a minute, how do I, how do I actually do this? How do I actually make this work? How do I get this great thing you're talking about and bring it into my life? Once your audience starts thinking about that, you got them hooked. Because then they want what you're talking about. They're not thinking, okay, interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. They're thinking, no, feed it to me, give it to me. Do I buy it? Do I rent it? Is it something I can learn on my own? Somebody I need to learn with somebody else? How do I do this? And that gets left out of some speeches, amazingly enough. Look at all these points, like, ah, save the world, save the whales. Fix this, fix that. Okay, great, all right, all right, that's what, I get your point. How do I do that? How do I actually make that point happen for me? Not about how some far-off politicians do things. Not about how some experts do things. Not about how some doctors do things, not some lawyers do things, but me, right here. How do I get involved with that thing you're talking about? And it also suggests that if you don't have that technique, if you can't honestly say, oh, well, you know, this is something that, yeah, they can do something about. Your audience can do something about. If you're thinking, no, this is something the audience has no effect on, it doesn't really affect them at all. Maybe you need a new subject. You need a new point. Because if you've got a point that the audience can't really do anything about, then unless there are fans of fatalism and everything being faded, they don't need to hear it. If you can't do anything about it, why bother talking about it? What's the point? See? There you go. People just throw out, if you, people that can't affect your point, they throw out your point. Okay, it's how to do something, but shh, you can't tell me how to do it? Okay, what's the point? Throw out the point entirely. Don't give me a technique, I'm throwing out the point. Don't give me a technique, what's the point? Why bother? You don't want your audience to go there. So give them a technique. Here's how to do it. Here's how to make it happen. Here's how to bring this into your life. When you're setting up your speech, think about making that technique work, making that technique pop, resonate. Okay. 
Now, the Gata Technique, there's something still more you as a speaker really do need to think about. All right, almost there. So far, you've got focused on who. Who is this for? Who your audience is? Your audience is bought into it. Okay, yeah, it's for me. What you're talking about? Okay, I get it. What? This is what we're talking about. It's what's going on and how. This is how you're going to do it. You know, aren't you thinking? Okay. All right. Now, pretty much that's what your audience is concerned with, and that's fine. But you as a speaker, there's one more thing you've got to start thinking about. Especially once you get this how to do it. And you know what your technique is. Here's how to do it. Here's the technique. Here's how to do it. You've got to make it work. Great. But as a speaker, it's something you really want to think about when you're going out there and speaking. And that is, how are you going to organize all this? About organization. How are you going to organize this technique? And there are many different ways to organize. Once you know this is what I want to talk about, how to do it, many different ways to organize. Sometimes you organize something in terms of you think, well, this is a very complex thing about how to do it. And there are a bunch of different steps to it, so it's going to take a much longer speech to do. This is where you get your keynotes, your long presentations, because they're talking about something that's so complex and so deep, you can't just say, oh, here's how to do it in five to seven minutes. Can't say that. So for that case, then you need more, more something. Sometimes it's just modules. You got a different module. Okay, here's one thing about how to do it, and another about how to do it, and you got these different kind of modules scattered all over the place. That's fine. Other times it's a process. So it's often helpful to have it be a process, step by step by step. First this, then this, then this, then that. The great thing about a process, then people can go back in and they want the same result. They just do the process. Do the process, get the result. Here's how to do it, step by step by step. Accomplish each one of these steps, and you get it. It's like baking a cake. Once you have the recipe for that cake, it's great all the way down. The thing about it is, is that if you don't have a recipe for the cake and just have the ingredients of the cake, it doesn't help you. If you don't know what combines with what or where things go or how much you bake or how long you bake, and that's something you really need to have that process. So although sometimes you just kind of list things out, okay, here's a bunch of stuff. You really want to say how to do something. Quite often step by step by step processes are great. Or if you have a pretty simple how to do something, maybe you want to compare and contrast. Here's things that work, here's things that don't work. Different ways to do this and talk about it. You can talk about the things that uh, are in favor of it, the things that are against it. Different ways, but Focus on getting that organization right. How are you going to organize your information in such a way that your audience walks away and says, okay, yeah, I can do this technique? Because that's really your goal. Your audience walks away, you want them to think, yeah, I can do this. The thing you're talking about, the technique and how to do it, that's me. I'm doing that. And that'll happen if you organize away. So it's simple enough just to say one step, boom. Here's how to do it. That's it. But it's more complex. Maybe you want a process. If nothing really has any particular order to it, and there's just kind of a bunch of nice things you can do to help with that, okay, here's a bunch of different things you can do. Pick one. You do this or this or this or this. It's another way to do it. Sometimes you have uh, different structures that are involved in it. Once you understand the structures and you understand some of the underlying ways that things are supposed to, it's very complex and it needs some sort of explanation. But all this is about different ways to organize. Different ways to get all the information to kind of come together so people get, ah, that's how to do it. Okay, I get it. That's how. That works. And once you get that organization going, then everything kind of completes itself. Then you finally got something you can work on, you can think about, you can practice before you even get on stage and really get that 
all together because now you have an organization plan you're going to use to present that how-to to your audience. It's tempting to just go out there on stage and just kind of wing it. But it helps ideally beforehand if you've thought about some basic things. And it's kind of a process for going through things. First, get to know who your audience is. Who are you really talking to? Understand your audience is so important. It affects everything to happen in your speech. It affects the wording of your speech, the way you word, the way you connect, what you're talking about. I mean, all this stuff has to do with understanding that audience. And who really are you going to try to connect with? Especially in a business audience, it's important to just kind of connect with everybody out there, all the general employees, or is it only for the CEO, or the senior managers, or the executive team? Who really out there are you speaking to? Once you understand who you're speaking to, then you can start focusing on what your point is. What's your point? What are you talking about? What really are you talking about? Because once you understand, okay, these are the people involved with it, then you can say, okay, this is what I'm talking about. And this is why it's all relevant to them. So some way you've got to figure out a way to say whatever you're talking about to connect in with those people. And that'll affect a lot of what you're talking about, your point you're making. And it's that one big point, like here is really what it's all about. Here's really what, what I'm saying here. It's that point that what you're talking about that's going to tie everything together and get people thinking, oh, yeah, I know what that is. That's what you want your audience to think. Yeah, I know what that is. I know what that's about. I don't know what, how that feels. I know all this. I get that. And then once you get that point, what you're talking about, then comes technique. Technique. Okay, I get the point. How do I do that? How do I do that? How do I make that point happen for me? Technique is so crucial, so necessary, so vital. Because once you get the point, then you're thinking, okay, how do I do that? Now, if you have a point, and you don't really have a technique for achieving that point, it's just kind of an informational sort of thing. Well, maybe you want to get a new point. Ideally, your audience is going to walk away with marching orders, with something that they can do, something they can, so they can really get involved in what you're talking about. If you're just kind of saying, hey, here's some stuff, well, Google's there for that. So that technique, that how-to. And once you have the how-to, then the next question is, how are you going to organize all that? How are you going to take all that stuff and organize it in such a way that people get it? Maybe it's a process, step by step by step, and that's really a good way to do things. If you can do step by step by step, like a recipe, people can just do over and over again and get that result you're talking about. That's great. But maybe it's just a bunch of stuff. Hey, there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can do this or this or this or this or that. And you just list a bunch of things. That's fine, too. That's a different way to organize information. Or you can compare and contrast, you can give counterexamples, all sorts of different ways to organize. Find the one that works best for you and the best for, for what you're talking about. Really that organization that really ties it all together, that gets it so people think, okay, yeah, all right, that's, that'll work. I'm going to organize it that way. And then, once you get that, then that's it. Then you've got, you know who it's about, you got your audience, you know what you're talking about, you got a point, you know how to do it, you got a technique, and then you got an organization that ties it all together. And when you have that pre-information and you've gone through and done the work, you'll find that creating that speech goes much smoothly, much more easily, much more quickly. And when you actually get up on stage, having done the work, then you see that your speech flows much better. You've got the right audience. You know what you're talking about connects with them. They understand how to do it. You're using an organization that's effective, that really, really works. And your speeches will go very
very well. And you'll be confident and certain and well informed when you get up there and do them. So remember, before you give up and give that presentation, do the pre-work. Focus on your audience. Be aware of the point, the technique, and the organization. And then be ready to give that speech.